colleagues from UNIFEST, which is the uh, one of the state universities in the state of Sao Paulo in uh, in Brazil, join us for this afternoon. And those three speakers are Professor Maria de Conceição, Conceição, uh, dos Santos, um, and Professor Leandro Ki Hechuchi Yangnazi, and Professor Cicera. Um, Aparecida Lima Malero. I'm so sorry for the very poor Portuguese pronunciations, um, but you'll be you'll be teaching us, inducting us into a little bit more Portuguese as we as we move along. Um, as I mentioned, Maria will be uh, presenting first, and then there'll be a, a short opportunity for um, a question and answer series afterwards. Um, so over to you, Maria. Thank you so much. Actually, I think I, I'm going to start uh, just okay. to... Yeah, Leandro, will start with a few presentations okay, and then I will. So hello, everybody. It's a great honor to be here uh, to share uh, about this initiative uh, in favor of inclusive uh, education at the Federal University of Sao Paulo that we call UNIFESP, as Professor Sean mentioned. Uh, I will make a quick audio description uh, to make this webinar more accessible. Uh, so my name is Leandro Yanazi, and I'm a professor, a professor at UNIFESP in the Superior Course of Technology in Education Design. Uh, I'm a white male uh, man, descended of Japanese. I have a short black, uh, uh, short black hair and dark brown eyes. And I, I'm, I'm wearing a black shirt, and in the background is a light gray wall. Well, this first uh, slide is composed with the Include logo, the International Collaboratory of Leadership in Universally Design Education, and the, uh, the title of this series of webinars, that's Professional Development Webinar Series uh, 2021, Examples of Access, Inclusion and Universal Design for Learning in Higher Education Around the World. So we are talking about Brazil today. Just below, uh, there are the logos of UNIFESP and also uh, the UNIFESP as Accessibility Portal that we are talking today. Uh, and among these logos, uh, in the title of this webinar, we have this, the title of this webinar, UNIFESP's Accessibility Portal Inclusive and Open Design to Support Inclusion Higher Education. Below, uh, uh, there are our names, Professor Maria da Conceição dos Santos, Professor Leandro Queiriguchi Anasi, Professor Cícera Aparecida Lima Malheiro. At the bottom of this slide is a graphic of a digital network composed of lines and connection points. Well, uh, on the second light, uh, slide, we are presenting the topics of today. Uh, we, we, that we prepared for this webinar. So, Professor Maria will start talking about the context of special education in Brazil and at UNIFES. She will also speak about uh, actions uh, to promote accessibility at the Baixada Santista campus uh, at UNIFES, where she is the coordinator of the Accessibility and Inclusion Center. Afterwards, Prof, uh, Professor Cicera and I We'll talk about uh, UNIFESP's uh, accessibility portal, and we'll talk about its goals and its features. And finally, we'll have we'll try to have a hands-on moment uh, uh, where we will invite everyone here to share your actions for accessibility in your uh, uh, context of education. But first of all, I want to introduce you a little bit about UNIFESP and say that we are uh, all uh, you are all very welcome when you are in Brazil to visit us. Uh, in this slide, we present a photo of the, of the facade of the front of uh, UNIFESP uh, Rectory Building. So we are, you are all welcome. And just to say a little bit, UNIFESP is a university that began as Paulista School of Medicine, School of Medicine in Sao Paulo in uh, 1933, but it became a full university only 26 years ago. Uh, it became, uh, current comp uh, comprises seven campuses in different cities in the state of Sao Paulo. And on this slide, we present the map of Brazil, highlighting the state of Sao Paulo, and then we highlight a map section showing the location of the seven uni UNIFESP campuses. 
And uh, here in this uh, slide, we present some photos of UNIFESP's campuses and bring information about its academic units, such as schools and institutes of each campus. Camp, campus. Uh, today, there are uh, 58 undergraduate uh, courses with nearly uh, uh, 14,000 enrolled students, and there are more than uh, five, uh, 5,300 students enrolled in 68 strict senso, stricto senso graduate uh, programs. In addition, uh, uh, 2,000 of people who participate in UNIFESP's projects and e extension courses. So, uh, welcome to UNIFESP once again. Uh, and now, Professor Maria will talk a little uh, about the context of special education, includes, inclusive uh, education and accessibility in Brazil and at UNIFESP. So, please, Professor Maria. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Professor Shan, Professor Linda, uh, Professor Cicera and Leandro, to invite me for this webinar. And and thank you all to be here. And I will share just a little bit of my experience as a manager of this unit inclusion center at one of the campus in, in our university that's in the city of Santos. And I will do a quickly uh, audio presentation of myself. I'm a white woman uh, wearing a warm clothes because it's very cold here today in Brazil. <laughs> and uh, I'm wearing white glasses, glasses with the white frame. And I'm um, sitting in my office and behind me there is a flirt background of my wall. So, uh, I would like just to make a quick context of uh, higher education and inclusive policies in Brazil. Brazil has signed the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability in 2008. And we have, so and based in all those uh, international uh, laws and documents, we also have in Brazil a national policy for inclusive education. And we start this with the in, in inclusive education in higher level at universities very recently in 2008, 2010, around this. And this was born in a, in a labor party was running in Brazil with Prof uh, President Lula. So to stimulate universities, especially federal universities, we have three kinds of universities in Brazil. We have the federal ones that belong to the federal for the central government. We have state universities that belong for the state governments and a few of um, it's not municipal. I can't Sean can later on me help me with the name for the you know the small cities. And we also have private universities. Our university, UNIFESP, it's a federal university. So our budget comes from the central government. So the, this uh, education ministry create a program called, also called INCLUDE program, and to stimulate universities to create programs and policies to uh, include students with disabilities. So I think that the first, the fact that we have to consider all over the world, but also here and especially in Brazil, is that the new students, uh, these students with disability, it's quite new arriving at universities. So their arrival has been revealing great challenges to those involved with the team of inclusion and accessibility. There are several kinds, several different accessibility needs for those group of students due to the human functioning diversity. And also we have to consider 
that the important aspect of social aspect on the disability creation process. So it's not just biological uh, challenges, but also and mainly I would say social context that will define the disabling barriers. Uh, UNIFESP has started a new chapter on our social commitment of offering high quality education for our students. And our policy of accessibility and inclusion education is it was recently approved in uh, November 2018 by our central board of the university. Uh, on my point of view, particularly important to create a successful path to build a new, a new culture institutional that is more inclusive, considering that historically those group of people with disability has been excluded from you know, education and so many other social policies. I would like here to give my testimony as a coordinator of this unit in, in my university and my campus, UNIFESP, by Shada Santista. It's the name of the region. And how the portal has been so important for me as a manager. I would, I'm a professor also. I have a position as a professor, but I have this administrative position at my campus. And the portal has been a very powerful tool for me to spread the, the, the new culture that we all have to embrace in to promote inclusion and accessibility to all. And this portal has been help been very helpful to spread the importance of investing, especially on my point of view, invest on teachers training to find assistive solutions of accessibility, especially on pedagogical and attitudinal and instrumental dimensions of accessibility. Pode passar o próximo slide, por favor, Leandro? Uh, quickly, uh, just to show the dimension of person with disability in Brazil, our last census, it, our report is from 2010, so 11 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> I will not be able to read the slides because it's quite small for me, but what I would like to say that in, in this census, it showed that we have almost 25% of people with disability in Brazil. In 2019, this institution of uh, statistics and geography, Brazilian Institute, that's responsible for national data, they review this information based on the Washington group. And so this proportion, it's lower a little bit because now they are considering uh, just considering person with disability, those one that has several or very major difficulties to ADL independently. But even though we still have a quite, we are a big country with a very big population, so even 7-10% it's quite a big amount. Uh, Another thing that I would like to, to put in light, to highlight here, is that we are all facing all over the world a new challenge with this pandemic COVID that imposes on us social distancing. And the social distance imposed on us by pandemic brought a whole new layer of complexity to offer education accessible for all. Such complexity was magnified, especially in countries where social and economic inequalities and inequities are present, Brazil among them. And I will come back to this idea in next slides, how we try at 
UNIFESP to identify those students that during the pandemic, and uh, we have suspended all the uh, present classes, not present, um, there's another word for this. Well, they call it here, it's face-to-face. Generally. Yes, or, yes, thank you, yeah. so thank you. Yes, yeah. we are. Ha we have been now in almost one year and a half with not face-to-face -face classes, so it was a, quite a challenge for our in Brazil, for everybody, but especially in our university, where I can talk about it. How to identify those students had who had the conditions to follow this remote in, uh, education. Pode passar o próximo, por favor? So, just coming back what Professor Leandro Red said, UNIFESP, it's a multi-campus university. So, we have the central uh, board in Sao Paulo, where the, the university was born, and then we have different campus. My campus is about 100 kilometers from Sao Paulo, close to the beach, close to the shore. Uh, so this policy of uh, accessibility inclusion, it's uh, one policy for the whole university, but each campus has different courses and has different geography, accessibility, urban accessibility differences. And so it challenges us a little bit how to uh, manage those difference in every country. Pode passar o próximo, por favor? Just quickly, so the policy uh, project that we have a central board called Câmara Técnica de Acessibilidade e Inclusão, it's a central board that in each campus has different nucleus or units in for every uh, for every campus of our university we are seven campus so different campus uh, so what i'm talking about from now on it's about my experience in my campus as we are a very i would say young policy at the university we still managing what we have in what challenges are common, what ch challenges are singular or particular for each campus, and how we manage to work among those challenges. Yeah, I will skip that part because this is more uh, explained on the thing, but the, the, the policy it was built on some basis. So uh, in, from the enrollment of the students and then assist, access, assistive technology and how to form in, uh, students and academic and teachers in infrastructure and communication. So we have different pillars based the work for each uh, Unit. Por favor. I am an occupational therapist from my background. I'm an OT, so I'm very familiar with uh, those social model of disability as a theoretical approach in my clinical field as a rehabilitation professional. When I when I came to the position very recently in 2017, 18, in this, just when the policy was approved by our Central Council. That's the theoretical approach that I have been based, my work, my speech, my, my conversation with the colleagues to promote inclusion. Because I think that the biomedical model is still very hegemonical 
among people, among everybody. So it's always thinking that if the people, if one person is blind, she will need something. She will need braille, for example. If, and what I'm trying to develop in uh, uh, institutional culture among my colleagues is that inclusion is a dynamic process. And the social context, it's very, very important to define the outcome. So what I'm trying to focus also, based on, on this model, is to focus on the infrastructure, structural context and uh, cultural institutional context and not to focus on individual. It's not trying to, to give instruments for one, is, one student for like to solve his problem, but how the institution, how university must be accessible for all. And um, in that point, I would just would like to uh, to say that also, on my point of view again, I think that the social model of disability is the core of the Convention of Rights on Rights of Persons with Disability. It has been also contributed by the World Health Federation organization, sorry, to influence uh, the ICF, the International Classification of Functioning and Disability and Health. So, I think that we have, uh, we have been living now a new era to change the paradigm of what is disability and what is disabling context for inclusion and human rights. So in that matter, I think that I have been, my working at, as a manager has been working mainly on how we can change cultural institutional from administration, from structural dimension, from instrumental dimension. And I will get back that the portal, the way that it's proposed to give more visibility for the team, for the theme of inclusion of persons with disability and how accessibility is the main tool to promote equality. I think that has been very helpful for me to dialogue with my colleagues, with my dean of the campus and so on. Uh, so in that direction, uh, I have been working as an advisory body for the managers of the campus by Sada Santista. And I just like to highlight that in our campus, we have two different institutes, Institute of Health and Society that has six courses so from the health area, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, nutrition, physical educator, social workers, psychology. I think that's all. And we have another institute, Institute of the Sea, that <clears throat> that has the bachelor's course from uh, sea and engineering and petrol engineering, but related with the sea um, subjects. Resuming my final words, I think that I have been acting in three main, two main fronts related to the students with disability when they come into the university, I think that I, if you can change this, this large, por favor. And just coming back a little bit, sorry if I'm, if I'm going to, coming back and forth in my mind, English is not my first language. And, oh, who developed the accessibility portal? It was, Cicera and Leandro, Professor Cicera and Leandro, they will speak quite a bit about this very soon. I just want to say again that we don't have that 
we have just a few students with disability in the campus. We made um, a census in uh, last year, trying to find out who was who had disability and could be cha being challenged to have this remote, not face-to-face -face classes. And just to point out that 40% of Brazilian population does not have internet access of good quality. So it is very challenging to teach remotely. Pode passar o próximo, Leandro, por favor. Pode passar o próximo, I will not keep occupied the ten. O próximo também, por favor, que eu já estou terminando. I, I'm finishing. I will just to give some final words that my to focus on my job at my uh, unit is to identify the students with disability to try to from the interview, personal interview, identify the needs and suggest and work with them to find accommodations for their needs. And my other uh, action has been trying to uh, dialogue with colleagues from higher uh, board to my day-to-day -day colleagues, how it's important to change attitudes towards the students with their needs. They need different pedagogical approach, they need different assessments approach, and they also need different instrumental pedagogical approach to give them access to uh, knowledge. So thank you very much and sorry about my English, but it's not easy to speak in another. I can, I sound a little bit smarter when I speak in Portuguese. I thank you so very, very much, Maria. And I will just say that um, your English was very, very good and easy to follow, even for me that I am not an English native speaker as well. And it's absolutely correct, the thing that you are saying, that we, um, even if you sounded very, very smart, I think the feeling from all of us that talk a second language is the same, that we could do it a little bit better in our own language, but it was great. It was really, really great. And we have had a couple of questions in the chat, but I have also seen that, Leandro, you have been very busy by answering this, keeping up with the answer. So I, I just uh, want to encourage all our guests here to please, if you have any questions for Maria, to you are very welcome to um, say them now before we continue. I must say, uh, by the way, that I was very impressed about the way that you were uh, introducing yourself in a way that uh, to assess uh, increased accessibility for people with visual impairments. And uh, I think it was a very nice way of introducing yourself. And I see that Sean has a question. We can't hear you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I think I should probably introduce myself. Um, so I'm uh, Sean Bracken. I'm a white, somewhat elderly, balding male with a, um, a growing silver beard. And I'm wearing black rimmed glasses and a blue T-shirt, despite the fact that it is 17 degrees Celsius, which is quite warm here in the UK. And um, in the backdrop, I have, because I'm in my office at the University of Worcester, I have some books and some pictures on the wall. But my question to Maria is, I've got two questions, actually. One, why, if there has been laws passed in Brazil in terms of a percentage of students needing to come from uh, backgrounds from disability, 
why are there so few of the students who have disabilities within the universities? That's the first question, so it's a local question to you. And the second question is a broader question, and that is, um, what, how does Brazil fit in, in relation to its inclusive agenda more broadly in the global south and specifically in the South American context? Because this is something that uh, we spoke about a couple of days ago and I found it very, very interesting. So the first question is related to why are there so few students? Um, and perhaps what I'll do is I'll give you a context that like for our own university is something in the region of 11% of our students would have declared disabilities and probably up to about 20% of students would have a disability of some form but may not have declared them. So I suspect that one in five of our students would have an element of, of, uh, of a disability. So I'm just curious as to why what, what do you think some of the factors might be? Well, Sean, first of all, uh, we have the, those enrollment for university in Brazil. We have this national exam. Wow. And in Brazil, we have uh, uh, the law of quotas that the students with call the Reserva de Vagas. I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I can say this in English, but it's some uh, vacancies that reserve it for some vulnerable groups like black, uh, um, Indians, indigenous people, and more recently students with disability, person with disability, and also for the lower income families. There is there are rules how to how students apply for this and if they fit or not fit on that. And for students with disability, it's the law is still very much focused on biomedical diagnosis. Okay, I think that's one. Of, so I I have the access for the enrollment is students enrolled in my campus or university for those who apply via quotas so they enter via this uh, uh, reserve of quotas saying that they have disability on my experience we have another students that do not want to disclosure if they have or not and the law it's still very focused on the major disabilities like blindness, deafness, and motor disability. And we have this cognitive impairments, but it's still not very high. So probably my data, my information, it's not revealing the reality because we have this, we have to improve on that point. And my other uh, point that I would like to, to see that students with disabil disability as the, has been related to poverty, lower income and so on. So these students have a, a lack of access for the fundamental is, is the school to reach uh, uh, the levels so they can apply for university. I think that's at that point, that's what you're saying about the United Nations for the develop. Um, sustainable de de sustainable the, development goals, yes. Thank you, your English is very good. <laughs> uh, I think they, they, they mentioned in the reports that disability must to be a transversal point in all those objectives because disability has been related to poverty, lack of access of uh, social policies and so on. So we have been working as a country 
uh, I would say that in last two years, not that much, because we are facing uh, kind of lower investment and in social policies in, in Brazil. But in, I would say that in the last 12, 14 years ago, we have a we have had a huge investment on uh, social policies. And that's why also our university grew up among others, because there was an educational policy to spread higher education to all. So we are, I think that historically you are always, you know, ups, ups and downs, ups and downs. And I would say that now we are going in a down situation that I hope that we will get rid of. <laughs> I don't know if I could answer your question, but it's. Thank you. Yes, it sounds like a very complex situation and partly it has to do with um, the elements of elementary and secondary education as well, or primary and secondary education, where mm -hmm. there are also barriers and those create further barriers for, for, uh, for those students with disabilities later on. Um, great, thank you. I just want to add one thing that, of course, we always had students with disability at university. We always had. But as a policy, as a national policy of inclusion at higher education, we are in the in the beginning. So I think that, you know, the, the older students, so they are now graduated, uh, they all face a regular teaching model with no accessibility or inclusion approach before. Thank you. Leandro, I think are you are you next on in the presentation or is, is it over to uh, it's Cicera, uh, Professor Cicera, please. Ok, Leandro, próximo, pode colocar no próximo. Bom, olá a todos e a todas, né? Primeiramente, quero agradecer a oportunidade de participar desse webinar do Include e falar sobre a concepção do portal de acessibilidade. Farei uma pequena participação. Hello, everyone. First of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to participate in this INCLUDE webinar and talk about the conception of the UNIFESP Accessibility Portal. É, mas antes, eu gostaria de iniciar também apresentando a Carmen, que é pesquisadora da educação e colaboradora com esse projeto de pesquisa é, que está sendo apresentado hoje, né? É, ela realizará a minha interpretação E eu vou iniciar fazendo uma breve audiodescrição minha e depois ela fala, fará dela, tá? Eu sou mulher... Before starting, before starting, I'd like to introduce Carmen. She is a researcher in the field of education. She is a con contributor to the research project that is being presented today. She will interpret me and I'd like to make a brief description of myself and following that, Carmen will make her own audio description. Bom, sou mulher branca de cabelos longos, lisos e castanhos, uso óculos de grau e visto uma jaqueta preta, né? está frio, estou no meu escritório em casa. I'm a white woman with long straight brown hair. I wear glasses and I'm wearing a long sleeved blue shirt. It's cold today uh, and I am in my home office. My name is Carmen Flumignan. I'm a Brazilian white woman. I have brown shoulder length hair, dark eyes, and I'm wearing a long sleeved red shirt because it is cold today, <laughs> just to make it clear. Uh, and there's a white wall behind me. Bom, assim como foi bem apresentado nas falas anteriores, o desenvolvimento do portal está alinhado aos eixos da rede de acessibilidade e inclusão estabelecidos na política de inclusão da Unifesp, né? So, as well presented previously, the development of the portal is in line with the axis of the Accessibility and Inclusion Network established in the Inclusion Policy of UNIFESP. Eu não vou citar aqui os eixos, mas além disso eu quero é, frisar né, que essa pesquisa 
desenvolvida para conceber o portal, ela está alinhada também às metas estabelecidas no plano de desenvolvimento institucional da Unifesp. I'm not going to mention all the axes here, but I'd like to say that the research was conducted for the development of the accessibility portal proposal and it's in line with the goals established in the institutional development plan of UNIFESP. E a partir do atendimento dessas metas e alinhada à política, a equipe de pesquisadores envolvidos na concepção do portal estabeleceu alguns objetivos os quais serão acompanhados por um sistema de avaliação que foi desenvolvido por esse grupo de pesquisadores, e o qual o Leandro, a Maria, a Carmen fazem parte, a Isabel que está aqui, que eu percebi que está aqui no, no evento também, fazem parte. Based on these goals and in line with the policy, the team of researchers involved in the design of the accessibility portal established some objectives, which are assessed by an evaluation system that was developed by this group of researchers, which Leandro, Maria, Carmen, Isabella and I are part of. E esses, esses objetivos, eles são organizados em três grandes grupos, né? Por isso, na tela, eu projeto uma imagem com três portais para ilustrar a ideia de portal e agrupar os objetivos. These goals are organized into three large groups. So, on the screen I'm projecting right now, there is an image of three portals to illustrate the idea of a portal and to group together the goals. E, e esses objetivos, né, esses três objetivos, tem como propostas é, contribuir na disseminação e partilha de ações, experiências formativas e de recursos materiais para promover a redução das barreiras arquitetônicas, pedagógicas, atitudinais, de comunicação e informação, conscientizando né, os estudantes, os professores e técnicos da Unifesp sobre os processos e recursos inclusivos e de acessibilidade no ensino superior. The goals are to contribute to the dissemination and sharing of actions, training experiences and material resources, to promote the reduction of architectural, pedagogical, attitudinal, communication and information barriers, raising awareness among UNIFESP students, professors and technicians about inclusive and accessible processes and resources in higher education. Um outro grande grupo né, é contribuir no desenvolvimento de ações e políticas institucionais de inclusão e acessibilidade no ensino superior, comprometidos com a transformação educacional, social, para o pleno exercício da cidadania e o fortalecimento da democracia e dos direitos humanos. Another group is also to contribute to the development of institutional actions and policies for inclusion and accessibility in higher education, committed with, uh, to educational and social transformation for the full exercise of citizenship and the strengthening of democracy and human rights. E o terceiro e último grupo né, de objetivos é contribuir na participação, colaboração e visibilidade das ações de acessibilidade dentro da instituição, nacionalmente e internacionalmente, articulando e congregando projetos de extensão por meio de cursos, eventos e serviços relacionados à inclusão e acessibilidade, bem como fomentar né, o desenvolvimento de pesquisas na área e essas parcerias. And the last group is to contribute to the participation, collaboration and visibility of accessibility actions within the institution nationally and internationally, articulating and bringing together extension projects through courses, events and services related to inclusion and accessibility, as well as promoting the development of research in the area. E, embora ele tenha uma estrutura de website, empregamos o nome portal, pois ele foi concebido para estabelecer uma comunicação e relacionamento com o público interno da universidade, do Brasil e do mundo. E a comunicação ela é estabelecida por meio de duas vias, né? não é só informar as pessoas, mas também compartilhar conhecimentos, recursos, práticas e experiências diversas. 
And although it has a website structure, we use the term portal as it was conceived to establish communication and relationship with the internal public of the University of Brazil and of the world. And communication is established through two roads. It's not just about informing people, but it's also about getting information, sharing knowledge, resources, practices, and diverse experiences. Próximo slide. Bom, mais adiante o Leandro vai detalhar alguns detalhes dessa interface, né? Mas eu só quero destacar inicialmente que durante o desenvolvimento do portal, o grupo de pesquisadores né, é, entendeu que precisaríamos dar visibilidade às dimensões de acessibilidade que estão sendo projetadas aqui na tela e não nas áreas da deficiência, pois o foco, então, na, né, na solução, é, ou seja, na acessibilidade. Later on, Leandro will better detail the interface and structure of the accessibility portal. But I want to highlight uh, that it's that uh, during the development of the portal, the group understood that we would need to give visibility to these dimensions of accessibility and not uh, in the areas of disability, because our focus is on solution. It's on accessibility. É, assim, né, a partir das dimensões e seguindo a identidade das cores da Unifesp, né, desenvolvemos o layout e a proposta norteadora do portal de acessibilidade. So, based on the dimensions and following the color identity of Unifesp, we developed the layout and the guiding proposal of the accessibility portal. Por isso, ao lado desses ícones, né, representando aqui a identidade de cada uma das dimensões, está uma projeção pequena do layout da primeira página do portal de acessibilidade, que agora o Leandro vai falar, né, apresentar alguns detalhes deles. E eu agradeço né, novamente, obrigada a todos e obrigada, Carmen, por fazer a minha fala nesse momento. Obrigada. That's why next to these icons, there is a small projection of the layout of the first page of the portal of accessibility that Leandro will now present in great detail. So I want to thank you everyone. Thank you, Carmen, as well. Uh, and I'm uh, very glad to be here with you. Thank you, Professor Cicera. Thank you, Professor Carmen. Uh, so uh, going uh, ahead, uh, this is the, the, the print screen of the, uh, the first page of the portal. And some of the main features and fun functionalities of the accessibility portal are the provision of training course, is access to information and actions of the accessibility and inclusion centers of UNIFESP, uh, organization of uh, ebooks, documents, data, and accessibility information, um, highlight on uh, accessibility uh, dimensions, as Professor Cicero mentioned, uh, easy access to events and, and news about accessibility, um, support with services such as uh, uh, sign language interpretation and audio description, as we are trying to do here to, uh, this, uh, in this meeting, and access to portals, uh, video channel also, and um, about the portal, despite uh, having been launched at the end of April, it already has almost uh, 20,000 uh, clicks and 600 interactions. So we are very happy that it's, uh, it, it's, it's becoming um, uh, a reference about accessibility in our community. In this slide, we are presenting three photos uh, of actions in favor of accessibility carried out by, uh, dif uh, by different campuses in UNIFESP. And once again, um, we are showing the map of Brazil and the locations of uh, UNIFESP campuses uh, to show how uh, important it is to share uh, this uh, experience. Uh, in this slide, we are, uh, th there are examples of the pages of the centers of accessibility and inclusion of uh, each campus in the portal. So each campus has his its own uh, page to show, uh, to tell about uh, themselves, their actions, and to uh, make more uh, connected all the actions. 
uh, we have also uh, the institutional history on accessibility and the description of services that are already offered by the uh, pro dean pro directory of students affair of unifesp we have news session of the portal that is connected with the department of institutional communication of unifesp to filter and highlight all the news uh, that deals with accessibility and, and inclusion. And similarly, we have uh, all the events about accessibility and inclusion uh, uh, highlighted in the portal. Uh, the main institutional documents on rules of, uh, of procedure and accessibility le legislation are also highlighted on the portal to make it easy to, to get these uh, documents. And we are uh, developing ebooks. Uh, in this uh, slide, we are uh, showing examples of ebooks about visual impairment, uh, attention, the, the uh, deficit, hyperacti uh, uh, hyperactivity disorder, autism spectrum disorders, dys uh, dyslexia, among others. The, uh, we, so we are uh, developing these uh, ebooks, uh, making it uh, public and available to uh, help raise awareness and break capacitive stereotypes. We also uh, have a YouTube channel for the uh, Unifest Accessibility Portal, uh, where we have a lot of uh, videos uh, talking about the, the main uh, main issues. And uh, we can't talk about accessibility without, uh, without trying to offer the content in the portal in an accessible way. So the pages uh, and content uh, were implemented considering the guidelines of the World Content Accessibility Guide of the uh, W3C and the principles of usability uh, of uh, digital usability. And finally, uh, we present, uh, I, I think, our most important feature, <laughs> that is the virtual learning uh, community of the portal, uh, being built on an open and interactive model. Uh, the virtual community uh, aims to connect the portal uh, with society and with people from all over the world, uh, like Include is doing, uh, so they can exchange experience uh, knowledge and resource about accessibility in higher education. Uh, based on a digital forum model, uh, participants all, all, all over the world can include experiences, comment on and interact through uh, with each other through categorized, uh, categorized sorry, posts on accessibility dimensions. So we are using the uh, accessibility dimensions as the structure of the, the posts. The idea is always to focus on accessibility, accessibility uh, as a solution and not on disability as a problem. Uh, the, uh, the portal has terms of use to guarantee the user that the information posted will be uh, used exclusively for education purpose, uh, considering the specifications of the general law for the protection of individ individual data that we have here in Brazil. And um, uh, as we are developing the portal, I remember, <laughs> I remembered a conversation that I had with Professor Shun, uh, uh, that sometimes, uh, I think sometime last year, I don't, I don't remember well, uh, we are talking about problem-based problem learning and solution-based learning, and uh, it outcomes that in the middle of the conversation, uh, we talk about uh, that the uh, disability is not the problem, but accessibility is the solution. And maybe it's a, it can be a, a book, a project of a book. And then, uh, Professor Sharon, we talk about it. Maybe we don't know. But uh, I want to uh, invite you all to be part of the solution. So uh, our last uh, slide here is to ask you to be part of the, our virtual learning community. So please uh, go uh, to our accessibility portal, uh, join the community. So uh, uh, we are we have this automatic translator for uh, to, to English. 
Uh, so you can uh, enter by clicking in the community or in this button uh, to enter. And then you have to uh, register yourself and I, then you'll be able to add new topics and also uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, answer, uh, interact and exchange experience. For, uh, I, I think we have some minutes here, uh, we try to make uh, an, uh, we will we'll try to make an, an experience now. Uh, so it's a hands-on moment. Um, so I would ask you, uh, I will sh uh, stop sharing my uh, my uh, screen now. I will put here in the, the chat uh, um, uh, link to, um, let's, sorry, just let me copy the link. Uh, we have here a, a link to for you to get a Drive a Google Drive page. Uh, that uh, uh, we have some I, I, the, the uh, accessibility dimensions icons. So uh, let me uh, show you. Uh, let me uh, also uh, share another screen. Sorry. I think you are uh, you are getting the the, the drive uh, folder, so you can take them and, and, and the idea is to use them uh, in a, a Padlet. We are try. I will uh, give you the the link for you. Sorry. Where is the link? Sorry, sorry. And the link of the Padlet. So I, I, I invite you to enter this uh, this Padlet. Uh, you can take any of the icons of the uh, the, the, the uh, accessibility dimensions. And for uh, for to, to inspire you, I will uh, post a new uh, a new experience we are trying to do here in Unifesp. Uh, so I, I encourage you all to uh, also share our experience in this map. I will do an uh, uh, example. So for uh, I will click here to uh, add a new post. If, uh, I will uh, use Unifesp, Reitoria, that's where we are. I will rename this for just Unifesp. I will uh, put the attitudinal uh, icon because it's about a project to to help improve uh, attitudinal um, uh, accessibility. Let me take this one. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I have to start all over again. So uh, internet's not helping here. Ah, here. So I will put edit my. Um, I upload the attitudinal icon. And I will put a description of my, uh, my uh, project that's about uh, creating a development of educational games uh, educational uh, accessible educational games so it's the i have two projects that i'm doing right now i'm coordinating right now that's the digital games for teaching braille and digital games for raising awareness about autism spectrum disorders and so uh, my invite is to you all also enter this padlet and put some efforts you are doing uh, categorized by the um, accessibility dimensions that we mentioned and then we may maybe uh, we can have a, a great map uh, about uh, accessibility efforts in higher education uh, so that's, sorry no leandro that's great but i'm just wondering about the different um uh, topics that are here can i clarify these very quickly for you and we'll take our time with this we're with a small group of people so i think we can we can have the opportunity of the luxury of time and and reacting with one another and i think one of the elements of uh flexibility um in relation to universal design is perhaps uh being a little bit more uh, 
thinking of time a little bit more elastically, you know, so rather than, OK, we have this one hour, let's shove everything in there, but maybe just slowing that down and enjoying um, the opportunity to to find a new tool and to, and to explore it. So if you get a little bit frustrated, that's OK, uh, but we we'll just take our time with this one because it's worthwhile, I think. So uh, can I just clarify, Leandro? So architectural, obviously, I think that's clear. Um, it's it's uh, that's in the environment, obviously. Attitude, attitudinal, I think that's clear. That's obviously changing people's perceptions. Uh, communicational, what 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 does that tool, or what does that icon refer to? Yeah, uh, Sisra can explain better, but uh, communication, uh, it is uh, connected with the the, the, the need uh, to, to uh, have more um, universal um, information, uh, you can go through um, more universally uh, through uh, all aspects of accessibility, uh, like uh, for uh, blindness, for death, deafness. So how, uh, how can we improve our culture, our institutional culture? to uh, have this like we are trying to implement this uh, uh, audio description uh, it, it yeah. it's now part of our policy so uh, yeah. every uh, presentation we have uh, we we are encouraged to have uh, audio, audio description and also we are encouraged to have uh, sign language uh, uh, inter interpreters in all events uh, so communication consider all aspects so uh, the same right. resource may have spoken written signed uh, sign language digital among others uh, access superb and i think that obviously reflects multiple means of representation in in udl language so uh, it, so then in terms of instrumental uh, instrumental uh, you can uh, have uh, like uh, um, assistive technology uh, so all the accessibility uh, 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 resource and equipments, uh, like in uh, digital uh, equipments to help them, uh, Braille uh, rules and everything that may help uh, everybody to have access uh, access to the same information. It's uh, we have uh, some uh, 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 how do you say some interaction with communication also. But instrumental is more like uh, with the the uh, assistive technologies. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Methodological then. Uh, it's a mindset change <laughs> to cool. uh, uh, facilitate us uh, to uh, see uh, the importance of have accessibility uh, uh, tr in a transversal way uh, in our uh, uh, class planning. So, okay, uh, uh, excellent. It's, uh, yeah, so that, that's, I mean, that's really interesting because just before this, uh, that's the uh, with the department that's already here, as I mentioned, from in uh, representative from the Department of um, Health and Wellbeing, they were doing precisely that. And they were talking about their three year journey, actually, that they've made. And, and it's just it's, it's it's systematic. It's how they're approaching absolutely everything. It's very much embedded within that department. So that's the methodological approach. Programmatic. Uh, it involves uh, the the uh, the rules, the 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 use uh, um, professional training, uh, the the um, uh, uh, institutional agenda to promote perfect. accessibility. Great, great, great. And and I'll give you perhaps another example. Because I am from the University of Worcester, we have um, an inclusion toolkit, for example, that people can refer to. So that seems to be that that's where that one would sit in there. Great. OK. And web, I think, well, that's kind of fairly uh, self-explanatory. And I'll use the example of include for that one, perhaps. But great, we're getting we're getting some some uh, hits on the map and and that's great. So hopefully did anybody else want to join in about this experience or talk about uh, how, how they're how they're interacting with it? I'll have to give it a go myself now. Ah, Professor Betsy shared his experience. Thank you very much, Professor. Oh, very welcome, Betsy. Fantastic. Yes, and actually uh, speaking about UDL, we are seeing that the UDL is tra transversal through all these uh, 
accessibility dimension. So it's very great to have this uh, uh, to be more uh, near uh, include because now, uh, particularly myself, I'm learning a lot about uh, accessibility in a transversal uh, approach with UD and also UDL. So it's very great to be with you. Oh, some experience in, in Dublin, great. So the idea is uh, to, as we can see here in the map, uh, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of change, uh, challenges, of course, but we are we can um, be more uh, strength. Yeah? We have more strength. With, uh, we can share this uh, uh, our efforts, our uh, actions, and the map uh, is showing us that here in the uh, south hemisphere we have a lot of a lot of cha challenges, but we can be uh, inspired, but also can exchange uh, the challenges and the and the experience with all over the world. So I think that uh, I enforce the invitation to enter the accessibility portal of Unifest. Uh, in the portal, we have a, a, a map. This map is just for a, we, I, I create just for our exercise here today. But we have in the portal uh, an accessibility inclusion uh, map uh, that we uh, we have in, uh, we have include also map it, <laughs> uh, tag it here in the in our map. And the idea is to have uh, this map full of experiences. Uh, full of uh, exchange and uh, to, uh, to promote uh, the, the the accessibility in higher education. So in my part, I thank you so much for uh, having us this morning, and we are uh, here to to questions and everything uh, to 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 talk uh, to die to have this dialogue moment. Thank you so much. It was so great to hear and I am so very impressed of your work that you are doing. And now I was so focused on putting my spot in Sweden. And <laughs> so so I, I think it's terrific and what a network and how we visualize each other's work by this little padlet in a very easy and very 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 i can't find the words it's like maria said earlier <laughs> when you say it's not your first language you always you don't always find the words but it's i think it's a terrific way of working and i'm really so impressed and i am really looking forward uh, to uh, for us to be able to connect and work uh, more close in the future. And also when I noted the comments in the chat, I have seen that you have had a lot of comments of people that are impressed of your work. And, um, and there is a lot about questions about the portal. If it's um, how the, for an example, how the uh, staff, are they involved in this? Uh, portal somehow, or is it just for the students? Thank you so much, uh, Linda, for highlighting this question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if Cicera could uh, answer also, it'd be great. But uh, we are uh, we have this uh, much uh, disciplinary uh, team uh, mm -hmm. with professors, uh, with uh, uh, technical uh, employees. And also, uh, we have this involvement of the uh, accessibility and inclusion uh, centers that has students also. So um, we are to, uh, we always try to have uh, all people involved. But Cicera, can you bring more details, please? Você poderia até perguntar para ela especificamente. Que se trata. Ah, tá. Então, Cícera, na verdade, a pergunta foi sobre o envolvimento né, de equipes, como que foi, como que ele foi concebido, se tem alunos e tudo mais. Então, se você puder falar um pouquinho. 
É, sim, eu havia comentado né, que é um grupo de pesquisadores de diversas áreas, de diversos campos da Unifesp, né, e a, o trabalho foi encontrar, né, porque todos estão aí pesquisando essas áreas, mas estavam nos seus locos específicos. Né? As I said before, there we uh, were in a group of researchers uh, of the university, but located in different campuses. And we had to group together to get together. Tanto em relação a, a pesquisadores, né, na área da, da acessibilidade, na área da terapia ocupacional, como a professora Maria, na área de tecnologia, como o Leandro, a Isabel Meister, que estava aqui conosco também, na área de design. Uh, we had different researchers that could collaborate Uh, using their different backgrounds. So we had researchers in the area of technology, in uh, therapy, occupational therapy, uh, in the area of design. And if I don't remember all of them she mentioned, Leandro, you can add, <laughs> please. Estudantes uh, também, né? Estudantes de todas as áreas do conhecimento, inclusive pessoas com deficiência and students as well from different areas of knowledge and uh, um, people with disabilities as well. Thank you so much. We have another question. How did you decide the content for the portal and how was it funded? The work, how was it funded? Well, I think the content, uh, we, we started with the UNIFESP uh, needs. So uh, we have ex ex specific needs, uh, as uh, as Maria uh, said, we are very early as um, in early days as institutional policy. So uh, as we we get uh, students with disabilities or, or, or other uh, inaccessibility problems, uh, we uh, try to uh, make the ebooks, for instance, uh, to help professors and, uh, the, and the, uh, the technicals uh, team, the employees, to be more aware and to treat with respect and democracy. But uh, now we are uh, looking for uh, needs, in, uh, not just our specific needs uh, as Unifest, but we are growing and, and uh, watching, uh, like in the, uh, our projects in, uh, includes uh, assess accessible educational games, Uh, we are talking with uh, basic education also. We are talking with uh, fundamental professors from edu fundamental education and other instances. So I think the portal is now getting an other uh, briefings, other <laughs> income needs. So we are, I think we are in a, in a step of uh, maybe uh, grow. But the, the, the first structure uh, about contents uh, was made uh, in-house, in our uh, own needs. And, and, uh, and funded? No, we are not funded. <laughs> here, here in Brazil, we have uh, goodwill, maybe. <laughs> But I think that the main, uh, the the the, uh, the the idea is to have uh, is to 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 leave our statement, our uh, as a federal university, to be more democratic, to be more accessible. And so I think, uh, as a professor, we don't uh, have a resource. We have our time to to give to help to be to live to have that to to leave our statement i don't know maria wants to add something well i think that the answer is goodwill is the best founding in brazil <laughs> we we really face a lot of challenges with this financial budget to do to de develop this I think that there was a question and how is the portal will be being up to date and and I think that we still facing that challenge now how to keep up with this wonderful work that the team uh, developed especially Cicera and Leandro and uh, I, I would like to add just one thing that I think that the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, brought a, 
a big challenge how to manage all those digital stuff. For Leandro and Cicera, it's piece of cake. For me, I have I always call Cicera, Cicera, where should I click to find this or that? So I think that is not yet for even for the students and professors. We have to invest our time to learn how to provide education via internet webinar. So I think that's still a challenge. And uh, Cicera has a, a expression that I'm not, maybe Carmen can help me with in English. It's called letramento digital. Digital lettering. Exactly. So I think oh. that's to or digital. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm. I'm just trying to to uh, maybe Sean can uh, help as well because it's very specific. Yeah, it is quite specific, and it's um, it's there's a few different names for it, but it's digital badges, I think. So when you conduct a small professional development course, is that correct? And you get the kind of an acknowledgement of that course with a digital badge, no? Uh, or an acknowledgement, so or micro credentialing, sometimes it's called as well, where where you can get recognition for some courses that you may have completed. Is is that? What? Yeah, I I think she refers to digital literacy. Oh, okay. Isn't okay. it? Yes. Uh, yes. Let, it's, yeah. it's digital literacy. Yes. I yes. think it's closer. Yeah. And I think that the pandemic brought this. Uh, new layer you know how we the whole community must to know how to deal with the digital appliances and everything so even for our students when they get to the university in this pandemic phase brought us this challenge because not all the students especially those that come from a lower income background they do not have the knowledge how to use all those digital apps that you know can put them in contact with learning so i think that's the portal brought us this possibility how to learn exactly digital poverty exactly and I think that the main issue that the portal brought us, it was to open mind for everybody how to, we have this powerful tool, but we also have to invest in how to, how to change the culture and promote literacy to how to best use those technologies. Thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful presentation. I'm I know that I'm not alone thinking this because I can see all your um, all the big words about how impressed people are of your work in the chat. And I think you should be really proud of your work. And um, I think that I really look forward because I think this is a way that also we in Sweden need to be, uh, I, I think that we have have a lot to learn from you as well. So I, I love being in contact with you and to learn more about this. And I think that I can speak for most of the people attending here today. Couldn't I, Sean? Absolutely, thank you so much. And you make a very interesting point because sometimes in the global north we make assumptions that uh, that people in the global south can learn from us because mm -hmm. we may have superior knowledge. Um, however, uh, mm. what has been shown very clearly, no, Josephine, no, what has been shown very, very clearly this afternoon is that we have so much to learn from our mm. colleagues and that it is a collaborative engagement. Um, and uh, and I'm so happy to see some of the the chat function uh, coming in there as well, where people are are exchanging um, contact details. I think that particularly I, 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 in 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 hosting our colleagues from Brazil, I think there is 
significant scope for you to engage particularly with colleagues from South Africa, of, of course from here as well, and most welcome, but especially I think with colleagues from South Africa, and it's great to see uh, uh, Nokutulu uh, Vilakati from, uh, I think from South Africa as well, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I think what you'll find is a lot of parallels um, Maria, I think especially in, in relation to how you've described your network in South America and some of the challenges that you're faced in relation to the complexity of multilingualisms, of vast uh, differences in relation to uh, economic and social poverty versus opulence as well and the disparities that exist there. So for more, very complex situations, and I think that it's, it's it, the, because they're complex situations that necessitate complex resolutions and getting resolutions and, and finding out from one another how we're going about that work. Uh, great stuff. OK, um, so I, I mean, we are a small group and there are, some people are still here. So Josephine, did you want to share something when you popped up there visibly, or were you just irate with my sharing of that concept? <laughs> no, I was over the moon with your sharing that comment because I totally, totally agree with you. I think we make a lot of assumptions in European and American countries about, um, you know, we have to go and teach the Africans, we have to go and teach South, Southeast Asians. Um, having worked um, across the country, uh, across the world, um, I think it is the total, total reverse. And I think we see more prejudice and more assumptions in Western countries uh, they're not so overt sometimes, they're more covert. Um, but in many other countries where people are working with a lot of life events that mean that they are uh, working with disability on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, either through wars or earthquakes or whatever, and therefore they are dealing with those difficult circumstances day to day um, and really working with disability as a much more of a part of normal life um, and therefore not having to put it into a category called inclusivity or disability. So um, personally, as somebody with a, a spinal curvature and a very overt disability, I have felt much more at home <laughs> in Africa <laughs> um, and certainly when I was working in Cambodia I didn't experience half the prejudice I'd get in this country so um, I am over the moon by what you're doing in Brazil and I would love to collaborate with you, really love to collaborate with you and the other people. Um, so thank you for everything that you shared and thank you for the way that you are opening doors that need to be opened, you know. I think that's a that's a superb place perhaps for us to leave things this afternoon. Um, so thank you so much to all of our colleagues in, in Brazil in particular from from UNIFESP and uh, also to Carmen who did a splendid job in interpreting um, and you've enlivened us you've inspired us this afternoon and uh, we r really look forward to obviously your continued engagement with include but hopefully from an outcome from this afternoon is that widening of your research network that little bit closer to to colleagues around the world as well so and thanks to all of our guests the six or seven of us who are remaining thank you for your steadfastness um, and your commitment um, so uh, Bom dia, muito obrigado a todos, a, a todas e todas, todas e todas, todex. Huh? <laughs> so thank you so much to all of our colleagues in Brazil and have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.